Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Michael Hartley with Action Coach. What needs to pivot in my business, kickstart your day, get you refocused, because business is changing daily right now. For is preparing for the sprint ahead. You see, whether you are shut down as a business or whether you're about to open one up, you see both situations, regardless if you're two months into a business or 10 years into a business, we're about to need to be prepared for the sprint ahead. Because what's gonna start happening is we're gonna start getting the, the, the plans of how we're opening back up the states and the cities and the country overall. And so we need to be prepared for that moment. So let's dive in. If you're not connected with us, get connected with us. We put out a bunch of free content all the time. It's just here for you. Uh, so get connected with us on the different uh, social channels and, uh, and stay connected with us that way. So when we look at all this, we always start with your mindset because if you're not good, nothing else will be. When we look at how you respond or react to situations, uh, what, it, what, what happens for most is the first, the, the catalyst, the stimulus, whatever the thing that is happening happens, and it puts us into the shock, right? We don't expect it. We don't anticipate it oftentimes. And so we, we end up very quickly either going into denial, like it's not really that big of a deal, or into frustration of, man, I can't believe this happened to me or happened to us or happened in general. And so what happens is we need others to, to help kind of see us from an outsider's perspective. One of my mentors puts it this way. He goes, it's really hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. And so we need others to look from outside the frame at us and help us get past the shock, denial, and frustration phases and help us get directly into the acceptance and then problem solving phases. Because what happens is when we look at the innovation curve, you end up either taking immediate action and being prepared and potentially being first to market with whatever is changing or being able to help prepare your customers and your clients and your team better, or you are in the lagging phase and you're behind all of it. And unfortunately, what's happening right now is, you know, the entire country has, as a business, as, as businesses under 500 employees started applying for these funds. And it was announced that, well, the government's kind of out of funds. And you have a whole bunch of these businesses who waited instead of being proactive, and they're going to be in, a, in an interesting situation. And we'll see what happens there. But the, the point being is, you have to be able to have others look at you so you get out of the denial or frustration or anger phase as quickly as possible. So you can get into the, I accept it, this is, what's, this is the facts. Now what do we need to do so we can make the right decisions? Problem solving. And, and this doesn't just happen to our economy. This doesn't just happen to the life cycles of the economy. This happens across life. When you think about when something happens, someone cuts you off on the road, someone says something to you, someone does something that makes you upset. Anytime you're in an argument, you're in this curve. You're frustrated, you're angry. You then kind of, I've seen this so many times. It's interesting when, when we see businesses that are um, family businesses, if you will. It doesn't matter if it's you know parent, child, if it's cousins, if it's you know uncles, if it's, husband, wife, what's so interesting to me is when we have family run businesses, this type of stuff happens over and over and over again. And you see it where they're like, oh, well, fine. You know what? I was trying to give you input and, and try to just help this business out. But if you're not going to listen to me, then you just do it yourself. And they storm off. It's not very helpful. They're in the angry phase and then they're going to storm off and they're going to feel depressed to some degree before they get into the fact of, okay, now we got to do something more proactive about this. Or what's even worse is when that just stays where it's at. And then we get into the whole, you know, parent-child relationships versus adult to adult and how are we actually responding to people or are we reacting? So when we look at our mindset, when things happen, when the catalyst, the stimulus, when something takes place, we need to be able to jump directly into acceptance and then what do we do about it. And oftentimes we need a third party to actually help us consistently looking to look at that so that way we're not stuck because if we get stuck we lag behind and when we lag behind things in business get real bad real quick so we have to be proactive with this stuff so 
have others in your life that will be honest and transparent with you. I have a client who, uh, very successful individual, uh, has been at the C level of two major businesses in the past, now owns his own. And his team is slightly scared to be, you know, hey, this is what we're seeing. And so as his coach, that's my role. And it's interesting because the first time it happened, I was like, I'm not really sure how he's going to respond or react to this. I just need to be honest with him. And so I did. That's my role. And what was so interesting to me was in that moment, he looked at me. He goes, thank you so much. No one else around me is willing to do that. And I actually really want to get better. I was like, there we go. And then he asked me, he proceeded to ask me to then do that all the time. He's like, I need more of that in my life so I can consistently be better. So please do that. Like, okay, there we are. So we need, we need others in our lives that help, can, can help pinpoint those blind spots and help uh, circumvent the anger phase or even the depression phase and get us directly into, I'm accepting what's going on. I can focus on what I can control and this is what we're gonna do ahead. And it's also about removing those conversations that, that spiral, if you will. If you have people in your life that throw in negative crap all the time into conversations, your role is to either stop it or remove them from your life. If, if they're family, then maybe you just need to stop them. Maybe you need to lead them a little bit better, candidly. You see, if, if you're in a situation where the constant conversation is around the first half of the change curve, it's your responsibility to step in and say, that's not how we're gonna operate here. That's not how we're gonna conduct ourselves here. So lead them through that. Lead them through the change, if you will. Remove those conversations from your life because they're not productive. They get your mind focused on stuff that they shouldn't be focused on and emotions that are not going to be very helpful. So it's your opportunity to then lead, which then, brings us into the path forward. Where does this whole thing kind of need to head? And this is gonna be the first of many uh, episodes, if you will, that are gonna kind of focus on this because the path forward plan must start today. We must be planning for June. We should already have a good idea of what May should be. And if we don't, we're gonna talk about your opportunity at the end of today. So we got to plan the path forward. And there's a lot that goes into it. And there's a lot on the, on the slide that I'm about to show you. And the, the purpose of it is just to lay the groundwork, the foundation of where we're going to start to head. So lockdown takes place. Current situation, personal business, family, personal care, energy, your mindset. Four weeks into this thing, your mindset's going to start shifting. Oh, man, I just, yeah. I'm always home. I'm always around the same people all the time. What can I do differently? Things like that. Business. We got team. We got to make sure that they're good. If we don't have a team, then that's easy. You're just going to make sure that you're good. Uh, business and finances. We, we need to, this is why we talk about business mastery, knowing our numbers, because we need to know them. We need to be able to understand when things like this happen, what that's going to financially do to us. Uh, we have to understand what uh, others around us are going to help us with and plan for that not to happen. So when it does, it's a celebration. That's why I've been coaching every single one of you who have been in this and any one of our clients to say, plan for June, as soon as this thing started, because it's a 90, 90 day game, right? It's 90 days, it's the entire second quarter. Plan for June. And then if we all get out of this thing earlier, then we get to celebrate it. Versus saying, well, they said it was gonna be April 13th. Oh, well, now they say it's gonna be May 8th. Oh, well, next time it's gonna be you know, May 20th. Plan for June. And then if things end up being better, we celebrate and we're already prepared for it. So then you get into the, okay, so now we have the initial pivots done and everyone who's watching this right now should have all the initial pivots done by now. It has been enough time to where the, the initial pivots in your business and in your personal life have been made. So now we got to get into the teaching mode. The, the teaching mode is where we start to help ourselves and others become better sharpening the tools that we have. So that way, when we start to sprint, which is phase four, we're ready for it. What are those things, those gaps in knowledge that you need to be investing in right now? You're here, you're watching this, which means that you're sharpening your tool on the pivot that need to be made for the future. That's great. What does your team need to be doing? 
What does your spouse need to be doing? What does your family need to be doing? It's not just about business. It's about us. And if we're just sitting at home watching TV, we're missing a massive opportunity. And what I'll share with you here is that those that invest this time into making them better, I always call it being the constant student. One of my mentors is a professor at NYU Stern. And she looked at me in 2000, oh gosh, what was it? 2014, I think it was. And she goes, Hartley, you're the constant student. And that has stuck with me ever since. And when you become the constant student, when you are the forever learner and you have others pouring into you and you're reading books or you're listening to them and you're going back to webinars that maybe you, that you needed to miss at the time and you're rewatching them or going back over notes from previous conferences that you've gone to and reading through your, your notes that you took to see, man, what are those things that I learned that I've forgotten or what are those things that I never applied? If you're not taking this opportunity to make you better, and everyone around you better, and you're not encouraging others to learn right now, you're missing an opportunity. So we gotta look at the skills on it. We gotta look at how good are we at self-management, self-mastery, there's no such thing as time management. We gotta look at how clear are we on the vision and mission of our life and the vision and mission of our business. And how does everything that we're doing right now align with that? Something I'm seeing a lot right now, because we're giving a lot of extra um, complimentary sessions to, to people who aren't currently clients. And a lot of what I'm seeing right now is people are scared and they can't see past today. They can't see past what needs to be done tomorrow. And fortunately, it's gonna drain them of energy because no matter what, they need to put that much energy into this right now. The difference is when you have a destination of where you're heading, I'm running towards it. Well, I'm, I'm pushing myself to run towards where I actually want to be. There's energy in that. There's a peacefulness in that. Versus putting that same amount of energy into just focusing in on tomorrow. And when we just focus on tomorrow, well, it's going to be another day. I'm drained. I'm waking up the next day going, it's another one of these. I'm not sure how today's going to end, but here we are. It drains us. The energy is gone. And so we must know where we are heading. And we must know the purpose behind it and allow that be the per and allow that to help us run towards it versus run away from something that we don't want. It helps us put the energy we need to into what we're going towards versus just the situation we're sitting in today. Every single one of you who have, who have been a part of this since the beginning with me, with us, with our firm, has known that we talked about the pivots in your product and services. And maybe you need to offer things right now that you've never offered before. And if you actually have not sat down to think through what would those be, then do that. Do that right now. Do that today. Do that in the next three days. Because this is still going to be, from the day this is recorded, doing it live, uh, this is still going to be another solid four to six weeks before something starts to change. So, if you're unfortunately, if you haven't done that right now, you're a little bit behind. Let's get you caught up. What's at least one thing that you could do right now to pivot your business, to do something differently? And again, that may be something that you stop doing two months from now. It may be something you continue doing. I'm not sure. That's up to you and what you see from the market and things like that. So the question becomes is what needs to pivot and what training and teaching needs to be done? Training is more of the uh, corporate turn. Uh, my personal opinion is we train dogs, we teach people. So what teaching needs to be done, what learning is probably the best word for it, needs to be done right now. And then what do we need to do shifting our messaging, shifting our marketing, shifting what our team is doing, shifting how they're doing it, how often they're doing it. All of that starts to kick in. Then we get into phase three, the warming up phase. And we start going, okay, so we've made these pivots. Now we gotta start getting prepared for the sprint ahead. And that, my friends, is where we sit today. Right now, we are now officially in phase three. We are in the warming up phase for the sprint ahead. I'm writing a whole book on this right now. <laughs> Be prepared to sprint. Because what's so interesting to me is the things that we're talking about right now are directly uh, applicable to startup businesses. Because right now, the entire country, when it comes to smaller to medium-sized businesses 
are hitting a reset button on, on their business. They're looking at their teams going, okay, have I just been letting something, you know, this whole thing slide because it was okay? We were in a summer economy and maybe I need to make some shifts right now. Where are we at? What are the things that we've been kind of lax on that we need to get more structured in? What are those systems? And what are we documenting right now? So that way, when we add new team members on, when we start to sprint, that we're not sitting here manually teaching stuff anymore. What are all those videos that are getting recorded and the documents that are getting created and the PDFs that are getting put into a folder system to, for everyone to be able to have access to? That is what the warming up phase is all about. It's about looking at your calendar and saying, okay, so in my calendar, how does it need to be structured right now for the business to be successful, to be prepared for the sprint ahead? Where's my mindset need to be at? How much time am I dedicating towards my family? Because we're all in the same house right now. And how much time am I dedicating towards the business? And, and what's that balance look like? And then what does the balance look like as soon as we open doors again? When, when the team starts coming back, are they prepared? I have a client who has told his team, he goes, I'm telling them to stay in shape because they're a bit of a, a you know, physical, they're on their feet kind of business all the time. And so it's like, I'm telling them, man, if they're coming back with the Corona 20, 20 extra pounds because of all of this thing, they're going to be struggling because we're going to be running so hard, so fast, they're not going to be ready for it. So they got to be physically fit in this moment. What are the new opportunities that are going to open themselves up for your business when this whole thing opens? Because again, we're going to see anywhere from 10 to 30% of businesses are not going to make it through this. And it's a very unfortunate thing. It's again, why we're donating a lot of hours every single week to help these businesses make sure that they survive through this and then are prepared for the path ahead. So there's going to be new customers out there that have had your competition before and no longer do. Interestingly enough, I want you to think a little bit differently when it comes to your competition. As an example, if I'm a magazine, who is my competition? My competition, because I have two clients, right? I have other businesses who want to advertise in my magazine, and then I have the actual reader. My competition is not other magazines. I mean, it, it is, that's not the entirety of my competition. My competition is any marketing out there because as a business, I look to market. And so if I'm a magazine and I want to get that business to market in my magazine, guess what? All other aspects of marketing, every other business out there that does marketing is my competition because as a, you know, my client, my, the business is only going to have so many dollars in their budget to market. And so they have to be very specific over where they put it. So I have to look at all marketing as my competition. If I'm a cleaning business, how many other types of cleaning businesses are there out there? It may not be just the specific one that the lane that I sit in that is my competition. There's a lot of other lanes out there that they're, they're all my competition. And so there's going to be new customers from each of these different lanes that I could now go get. Restaurants, oh my goodness. The amount of opportunity that's going to be there when the doors open and being prepared for that. So we are in phase three right now. And so we're going to focus the next couple of days on, on the warming up and then sprint phase so that way we're all prepared for the path ahead. So if you haven't addressed phase one and phase two, do that today. Don't waste time. Do that today. So that way we can all step into phase three, which begins tomorrow. Face reality as it is, not as it was, or as you wish it to be. When we understand the reality of what today is, and we proactively address it, we can actually move forward. If you need to plan ahead, which by the way, 100% of us do, uh, we're gonna be refining how you create your step-by-step -step plan. Uh, it's gonna be at the end of this month on a Wednesday, midday, central time, uh, and you need to be there. That's the most candid way I can put it. If you don't have a week-by-week -week plan for both May and June, you need to be in this webinar. All of our clients who sat down three weeks ago to create their 90 day plan are going to be in this because business is changing so quickly. Biz business is changing on a daily basis. And so because of that, we can't just create 30 day plans. We have to create 30 day plans that we adjust every 14 to 30 days. And so at the end of this month, we're going to be shifting our plans to be prepared for the second two months of this quarter. And then candidly, we're going to do it again at the end of May for June. 
because that's how fast business is changing right now. So you need a plan. You need to get into this webinar. The information is here. Don't go to, go to don'townajob.com to get more information about it. Uh, and if you have questions, please type them in here. Reach out to our team. We're here to support you. Get plugged in. It's time to start creating your plan for the path forward. And if you need a more short-term plan than just, uh, you know, you can't wait until April 29th, then reach out and we'll give you one of those complimentary sessions that we've been talking about. We are donating our time, energy, and effort to you to make sure that you not only survive right now, but thrive. So get plugged in. We're here to help support. Jump into the information on the webinar, the information's on our website, and we'll see you soon. I'm Dr. Michael Hartley. I'm here to elevate your business, enhance your lifestyle, get connected with us, and make it a great rest of your day. If you have questions, type them in. And we'll get to those right now. If you have questions based on anything that we've covered today, please type them in. If you're watching this recorded on YouTube later on, type them in to the chat uh, or to, into the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook or LinkedIn, type it in the comments and our team will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we're here to support.